Sally Cross Perkins, April 15, 1929, to July 27, 2011, a Revlon model succumbs. Sally always joked we needed to say this at her funeral. And in fact, she was a Revlon model for a turn of 27 with Beauty Cream back in 1972, when Revlon executive David Lennick, a dear friend from the University of Michigan, had asked her to join other middle-aged mothers for an advertising campaign he was doing. Her personal testimony under the picture was, I would be afraid to stop using it. <laughs> we kids used to tell her that we would be afraid as well. <laughs> so here we are to celebrate the wonderful life of Sally Perkins. And on behalf of my sisters, Polly Johnson, Sarah Marshall, and our whole family, and Molly and Maria, our friend and caretaker, we thank you for joining us. Sally had a pretty really full life. Starting out in Rose Point, Michigan, on the shores of Lake St. Clair, with summer trips over to, across the state to Castle Park. She blew through Rose Point Country Day and then on to Bradford College, before ending up in the University of Michigan, where she spied on a young, skinny kid named Mo Perkins, who just defended as a Marine the state of Rhode Island during the end of World War II. <laughs> Despite that he was a poor kid from Saginaw, Sally was from Rose Point, Sally knew what she wanted, and she knew how to get it and they were soon married. Thus started her career as a wife to an IBM and a mother to two sweet and simple daughters, Polly and Sarah, and a perfect son. <laughs> <clears throat> After 13 dutiful moves, with Mo and kids in tow, we, we ended up in the Nikita 1968, which as the Nikita advertiser says, really was her last stop before heaven. Mo was transferred back Three years later, her salary remarked that he should take that job, but don't bother looking for a new house because she wasn't moving. So as I remember my mother Sally, so many things come to mind. Well, for one, she had great spirit and a wonderful sense of humor. Even in her last years, when her memory was failing her, she could keep it going. Only a couple months ago, we were at dinner, and she asked my daughter uh, who she was. And Sarah said, I'm her granddaughter Sarah. And mom remarked, well, you are very beautiful without skipping a beat. And even more amazingly, because I would love to tease her about everything, I, I came back from the trip when it was Italy, and she said, you know, you, why don't you take me to Italy? You would never take me anywhere. And I said, Mom, I, I took you to Italy last week, you just didn't remember. <laughs> and she said, you did not. <laughs> And then she turned to Sarah and said, he was nothing when he met me. <laughs> Sally was a class half full of Pentagon. She would tell me there was nothing I could not take on a life and accomplish if I put my mind to it. I didn't appreciate it at the time, but she was a great encourager. How powerful was it to have a mom that told me that there was absolutely nothing I couldn't do or accomplish? Of course, she would have the same breath that the only person responsible for closing doors on my own opportunities would be me and me by myself. She kept the bar very high for all of us, mainly by being the master of guilt. And I can remember as a small child she was very mad at me because I was watching way too much TV. And she would remark under her breath that she hoped that I would be able to find a job someday where I can watch TV all day long. <laughs> Thank goodness for CNBC. <laughs> so yes, she ran tight ship. She kept us all, all well included, uh, pointing the right direction. She was the backbone of our family. When any of us fell down and, and, and went off the track, she would pick us up. She, she'd dust us off. She'd slap us around a little bit. But then she'd point us in the right direction and give us a kiss. I think she had the pattern on tough love. Sally also was quite spirited and a very opinionated person, in case you didn't notice. The only thing she liked having more than a strong opinion was sharing it. <laughs> you can imagine we did a lot of bumping that as teenagers. But the one thing that came out of your comments and letters was just how much fun she was. Now, as a kid, growing up in a rough neighborhood, North Pontus Ridge, <laughs> under the negative 
influences of local low life like Jones, Clark, and Bress. I was in trouble a lot. I saw the backside of her hand more than I care to remember. So I repeatedly heard fun, and I, I didn't necessarily agree. I can remember sitting in these pews, and my sisters made me misbehave, and mom would pinch the back of my arm with a smile on her face, knowing that I could only shriek out in silence. So I decided I'd ask around a little bit and get an outside perspective. I made the calls to all of you with the question, I know Sally had a good sense of humor, but was she fun? Did you really think she was fun? And I called everyone. I called Marilyn Jones. Oh, Jeff, she was so much fun. Great encouragement. Gloria, oh, she was the most fun person there was. I went right down the list. Fun, fun, fun. Finally, I knew I was in trouble when I got Carlin Tiefenthaler, who started relaying to me Don's story about the party in 1959. I said, okay, I got it. She was fun, and obviously for a very long time. But another thing I found out during my inquiries was uh, as I started talking to Lil Bowen, <coughs> she said, oh, Sally was so much fun on her mooch marches. Ah, the mooch marches. That was her idea 25 years ago, where she and Mo would invite themselves to all of her houses in Florida, like they were royalty. And they would send their itinerary. And you not only welcomed them, but you fought over their schedules, and you had huge parties for them, and then you welcomed them back the following year. I don't know how she did it, but clearly, she was brilliant as well. So now we say goodbye to Sally with all our cherished memories. Well, what gives me great joy is knowing that she's in the Lord's kingdom in all its splendor and glory. And the Apostle John tells us about how glorious it is in Revelation 21, verse 3 and 4. As I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them. And God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things has passed. Heaven indeed does sound glorious. And I'm sure she's up there with all her faculties and spouse her opinions as she always did. What gives me greater comfort as well is the fact that her only sibling, Judy Van Allen, who was afflicted with the same illness, decided to join her two weeks later. The Frost sisters are together again. Sally Perkins, a Revlon model sibling. She told us that we couldn't say it enough in her funeral. <laughs> I thank you and please join our family over at the Country Club after the service for lunch and to share more stories.